that you got from training with God earlier. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and your fit feeded with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, the next verse, Hebrews 4, verse 12, talks about how the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear that verse, I think of a lightsaber. When I grew up, I loved Star Wars. And lightsabers could cut through anything. They could cut through metal doors. They could cut through people, droids. Now, whenever I think about a Bible... I think that even through the toughest things that you're going through, the Bible is always the answer. If you have that barrier that's keeping you from, let's say, going to youth group, you can use that Bible to cut right through that door so that you can move on and pass that barrier. Now we're going to move on to my next point, which is the Christian mission. Now, there are two missions that we're going to go through in life. The first one is bringing souls to Christ. And the second one is battling evil that tries to take us down while we're bringing souls to Christ. In Mark chapter 10, verses, or Mark 16, verse 15, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creations. Now, going into the world and preaching. I'm not saying get on a plane and fly across all around the world and preach to every single country because you wouldn't be able to speak their language. But I'm saying you can just do the smallest things, like wearing a Christian t-shirt. Or when somebody asks you, you know, hey, do you want to go to the bar with me Friday night to watch the Gators game? Sorry. Then you can just say, no, I'm a Christian. And you can use that for your defense. Now, another verse is James Chapter 5, verse 20, talks about the reward for bringing people to Christ. Remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error, error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. Now, would you rather have the feeling in your gut knowing that you brought someone to church and you gave them the chance to become a Christian and that you could have saved them and that person that you saved could have saved many others? Or do you want to know that feeling that, man, I let that that opportunity to get away. I could have brought them to church, and you never know what could have happened. I heard a story about this man who all he did was he held a door for a lady with her hands full, and she thought of that as a kind, you know, wow, that's really sweet. So she went and donated a whole bunch of cars to Goodwill, you know, junk cars that she found here and there. And the, there was a guy at Goodwill that saw this, and he said, wow, why would someone do something like that? So later on in his lifetime, he saw a calling for a school in Africa that they were going to close down. They didn't have enough money, um, that they don't know what was going to happen with the kids. And he donated over $100,000 to this cause. He brought the school back up, food, shelter, clothing, education. And there was a young boy there that he knew that someone was taking care of him, and he had the feeling and when he graduated, he made it his life to travel around Africa to save the children that when he was saved, and he goes around Africa to this day, still donating money, still teaching children about Christ, still bringing proper education. And that's the last that I've heard of that story, that now he's a teacher, and he's a youth minister at a new church over in Africa, which I thought was pretty cool, that just one little act of holding the door could lead to someone traveling across an entire country saving souls. Now, my second point is that when you're trying to bring souls to Christ, you're going to be tempted, and you're going to have to battle off evil. In Matthew 26, verse 41, it says, Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What I learned from that is that you always need to be on your guard. 
You can't think that, oh, just because I'm with the youth group, I'm not going to get tempted. Because even with your youth group, you can get tempted. There's still so many places that you feel safe that you're not safe at. You need to know that God is with you, but he's leaving it up to you to make your choices on how you want to live your life. He's not treating us like robots and telling us what to do. He's saying, you can make your choice. And, but he's trying to guide us to do the right thing. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Now, in this verse, we're talking about that, again, he's going to let you be tempted. Because that's part of your training. That's going to help strengthen you. For when you are growing up and you see people being tempted, you know, I have that experience. I can help them. But if you're getting too far into this temptation and you don't have a way out, you don't know what to do, God's going to help you. He's not just going to abandon you because you went down that road. He's going to bring you back. Kind of like the shepherd that was looking for his lost sheep. He had all 26 and then he was missing one. So he went out to find just that one. That's what God does. God treats every single one of us special, and he puts special care in us. And when we stray away, he's still going to take us back at the end of the day. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 through 12, it says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. What this is saying pretty much is set the example. If we go out into the world, and even the small things like not cussing at school, not cheating, not, you know, bagging your shorts, just the small things that people do that they don't think it's a big thing, that sometimes has big impacts on people. And people see you not doing it, and they say something's different about them. Something is pushing him to not want to do these things. And sometimes that's just enough to strike up a conversation with someone about your God, about what you believe in, and about how they can come and how they can be the same like you. So, and then you have Victory Day. Now, Victory Day is a day that we are all looking forward to, which is a day when God comes home and brings all of us to heaven. Now, the Lord talks about in the Bible that trumpets will sound and that he's going to come out of the sky and it's just going to be a glorious day and everyone's going to know that he's coming. In Matthew 10, verses 22, it says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. So even though through your entire life you're tempted People make fun of you, calling you, oh, little Christian boy. They say that, you know, you don't have anything to stand up for, that you're just believing in a religion that can't save you. God says that you're the ones coming into heaven. They can sit outside and watch you come into heaven, but you're the one at the end of the day that's going to be with me. And we'll see who's joking on that day, you know. Matthew 24 and verse 13, it says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. You have to be strong in your faith. You can't be so-so. You know, I, uh, I'll be a Christian on these days, but these days I'm just going to be a party animal. You can't do that. You can't put on two different masks for two different occasions. You have to always stay one mask, one faith, and one Christian. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved his appearing. So, again, this goes back to the point that God is saying that you're the one going to come into heaven. You're the one that's been fighting for me since day one. You're the one that's been there when I needed someone to go grab a soul and bring it. You were somewhere there that could go to Honduras and that could build houses. 
you're someone that has done all these deeds for me. Let me do a deed for you. Let me give you a crown. Let me give you a place in my heaven. Let me let you have your own mansion. And that's a day that I can't wait for, is to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, this morning we had our, you know, ministry fair, where we all walked around, you know, we looked at different setups, different things that we could do. And that was, that was another test of training right there. Because if you were able to go there and say, I'll commit myself to this day, I'll give up all my daily things so that I can come and I can do something for God, which is really the thing that we should be doing. We should be giving our time to God. Since he gave his son for us, the smallest things we can do is at least come on a Saturday and fix up the church. At least we can come to a homeless shelter and feed the homeless. You know, give up some of our clothes and clothe those that need to be clothed. Now, we had Brother Pounds of us here, and he did the ABCs of many different things. So I thought, you know what, why not give it a try? It can't be that bad. It was tough. It was tough. I think I pulled out with it, though. You can still hear me? All righty. These are the ABCs of the Soldier of Christ characteristics. A, always ready for battle. B, you're brave. C, you're courageous. D, you're a die-hard Christian. E, every day praising him. F, fighting off Satan. G, going for the glory. H, always harvesting in God's vineyard. I, you're in the fight. J, joyously singing praises. K, knowing God is always there. L, living up for battle. M, marching to glory. N, never retreating. O, onward to victory. P, praising our Lord. Q, quitting isn't an option. R, righteous for the Lord. S, singing for the Lord. T, telling everyone about him. U, united as one army. V, victorious we stand. W, weaving against Satan's temptations. X, X ring our own hearts. <laughs> now why, I had to ask my mom for some help. Yipping for Jesus. <laughs> and Z, zealous for his cause. Now, thank you. If, if you have been one of the soldiers that have been falling behind, you have been retreating from battle when you should have be going forward. You can always turn around and start going back into battle. And if you're not a soldier yet, but you've been practicing, you've been training, and you've been longing for the day, tonight could be your night. We could do it any day of the week. We're always recruiting new soldiers. So if, let's say you've been falling short of the glory of God, and you need repentance, or you want to become a soldier, you can always come while we stand and as we sing. Now, we had Brother Pounds of us here, and he did the ABCs of many different things. So I thought, you know, why not give it a try? It can't be that bad. It was tough. It was tough. I think I pulled out with it, though. You can still hear me? All righty. These are the ABCs of the Soldier of Christ characteristics. A always ready for battle. B, you're brave. C, you're courageous. D, you're a die-hard Christian. E, every day praising him. F, fighting off Satan. G, going for the glory. H, always harvesting in God's vineyard. I, you're in the fight. J, 
joyously singing praises. K, knowing God is always there. L, living up for battle. M, marching to glory. N, never retreating. O, onward to victory. P, praising our Lord. Q, quitting isn't an option. R, righteous for the Lord. S, singing for the Lord. T, telling everyone about him. U, united as one army. V, victorious we stand. W, weaving against Satan's temptations. X, X ring our own hearts. <laughs> now why, I had to ask my mom for some help. <laughs> Yipping for Jesus. <laughs> and Z, zealous for